And we're back. And I really, I, I sh what I should have done for this segment is I should have opened with one of my fly rods and one of my reels and some of my tackle because we're going to be talking about trout fishing in Oklahoma. And there have been some changes and you're going to get to see some things that maybe you've never seen before, how we get the trout to the streams. And uh, well, anyway, I, I don't want to give it all away, but stay with us. It's going to be a good get together. Colton Berg with the Wildlife Department is here. Colin, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, Sam. It's been a couple of years since I've been on the show. It's been a while, and you you look terrific, man. You have gained weight, and <laughs> you got all your hair. I've I've got the slimming camera on right now. <laughs> well, they make those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Send me that address, will you? Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna take off first with with trout fishing in Oklahoma. Now, uh, trout don't just grow here. They don't just show up. They they're dumped essentially. But uh, you brought some video to share with them, with the viewers at home, uh, or if they're in a camper somewhere watching, uh, perhaps uh, you can tell us a little bit about what we're seeing as we roll the video. Yeah, you know, the thing about trout in Oklahoma, as you said, um, they are purchased. We purchase them. They're not raised in Oklahoma. We purchase them from a commercial hatchery um, oh, that's beautiful <laughs> so uh, you know it's 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 an amazing thing to be able to stock trout in the winter time we do have two year-round trout fisheries in oklahoma uh lower illinois and and uh down below broken bow on the mountain fork they're year-round trout fisheries but starting in november each year we have some trout fisheries that are seasonal that we stock that are some of them a couple of them streams uh, and then some of them are actually lakes that we put trout in. You know, the thing that's been going on with trout since I've worked for the department, which is over 28 years now, is the price goes up. Price has gone up. And, uh, you know, we've struggled with being able to continue our program because of those price increases. And we haven't had a license fee increase in over 20 years uh, for fishing licenses, resident fishing licenses. Um, and so as you start, you know, the economy, you start looking at it and, the, and we're actually our trout, I believe now are coming from Nebraska is where they're being raised and then brought in and stocked. Um, you know, they've got transportation costs. And so that drives the cost up. And as it goes up and up and up, we have to decide how do we continue the program? And so one of the things that we've done this year is implement, uh, we knocked the, the uh, bag limit back to three. Uh, that you can keep in any given day and that's to try to spread the numbers out you know we're not able to purchase as many as we were before so we want to try to spread them out amongst those avid anglers as much as we can um, it's a bonus type fish it's something that during the winter time particularly on a lot of great seasonal days that we have here in the fall and winter it's an it's a neat fishing opportunity that in a lot of cases, people wouldn't get ever get to experience in Oklahoma that don't travel, that don't go to northern states or over to Missouri or Arkansas, where they have cool, cooler water systems than what we've got in Oklahoma to where trout can be sustained. So it's a neat added opportunity, but that's basically the explanation as to the reason for the decrease in the limit was just the added costs that we're paying for per trout. Um, and then to try to spread those out between between the anglers and hopefully, you know, we don't get too many folks that just won't go because they can't keep five or six trout. It's just three. That's a pretty, you know, and some of them are pretty good size that we're stocking. So they can catch some nice trout. Oh, I've caught some nice ones down below the spillway on uh, Lake Tenkiller. Uh, and, I, and I've been there. I didn't know if you brought any video to show how they uh, how they dump them. But uh, that's an interesting process too. I'm I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm glad you told me though about uh, about the change in the number of fish I can keep. I can I can only keep three at a time, and that's because of the cost it involved in buying the trout to bring to Oklahoma. Uh, so if my wife is fishing, she can keep three, but they they have to be on her stringer. Correct. Is that correct? Yep. That's that is correct, Sam. You need to have your 
trout stringers have your name and information on there but she could keep three and you could keep three so your family could could have six which is definitely a good meal for oh, family yeah. and if, if all of if you take your kids and all of them catch three if you got three or four kids you can still catch a good number of trout is and, there any difference between the rainbows or the browns this year no no there's not um you know we there's only a couple areas there where we stock the browns uh, most of our seasonal trout areas are, are rainbow trout that we're stocking. Um, so, you know, just we also have a couple wintertime trout fisheries that one's in Oklahoma City and one that's here in Jinx, but they don't start being stocked until December. Uh, so it's a little bit later stocking. Uh, there are city park ponds. Uh, Jinx is over here at Veterans Park. That's really got a couple great fishing docks that we put in on on veterans where people can fish off of excellent docks. And, and uh, it's just down the road from our office here by the aquarium. You can see it from the turnpike mm -hmm. um, to the west of our office and to the west of the aquarium. So that's something that people in and around the Tulsa area uh, can enjoy uh, starting in December will be, it's the same limit there, three fish. Um, and then down in Oklahoma city, it's the Lisi. Uh, usually they stock them in. So those are added area trout areas that aren't the, the statewide trout that are with cities that we work with. Sure. I, uh, my wife and I have our lifetime license, um, but there are folks out there that might not realize that you can get that sort of thing in Oklahoma. But what, what, does, it, what does the fishing license cost? And is there a separate license for trout? There's not a separate license anymore for trout. Years ago, there was. Mm -hmm. uh, but the last time that we actually did a license fee increase, it was absorbed into the non-resident fees uh, for their non-resident license. If you want an annual fishing license for an adult, 18 years of age and above, it's $25. Um, so if you buy it now, it actually would expire the end of December. Um, so to get the best money, bang for your money, buy it in January, and you got that whole fishing year round cost for $25. Now, lifetimes vary. It depends on uh, general lifetime. Uh, fishing license is $225. Uh, we've got a combination that's a hunting and fishing for $775. The really good one, not to say anything about your age, Sam, but I think you probably qualified for this, is the year that you turn 64, you can qualify for a lifetime combination hunting and fishing license if you've never bought one at that point in time the fishing for the rest of your life is $15 and if you do the combo it's $25 and that's a really good deal and I always encourage folks even if your parents and grandparents don't fish or hunt it's giving back to conservation because that's how our agency is funded is solely by hunting and fishing license sales and the federal tax that's on certain fishing and hunting related equipment. We don't get state tax dollars. So that can actually, those dollars that you buy a lifetime license, it's matched then with federal dollars to help us defray some of the costs for those trout. So we buy those trout, if it's a dollar, we got 25 cents of state money in it and 75 cents of federal money in it. Well, I gotta tell you, I have, we have our, uh, uh, you know, they're like a, a credit card. They're same size as a credit yep. card. And, the, and I don't have to renew that. I mean, nope. it's, it's mine for life, but do I still pay a fee now on top of that? You don't pay a fee on top of it. And actually that you can use that hard card, but you can also just use our app that we've got our go outdoors, Oklahoma app that you can have on your phone. You can have your license on there. And it's basically a customer ID now is what they use. So if you've got your old license, it may not have the customer ID on it. So make sure you go and get your customer ID information off of our go outdoor system. But yeah, okay. that's the beauty about the lifetime license. All right, we have tied it up, but I will tell you, I have uh, I have a tendency to, to to fudge a little bit when I talk about trout fishing. Yeah, and I tell people if you saw the motion picture, a river runs through it, and you see the older guy at the end with a fly rod making those gorgeous casts, you can't get a clear shot of his face. But I tell everybody that's me. <laughs> <laughs> because his technique is so good, man. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that... Anyway, I want to turn to the hunting situation for just about it. Uh, and again, I, I think I mentioned to you before we started that there are going to be folks out there saying, oh, I just can't shoot Bambi. But you're, it, this is out of necessity. 
that we have uh, deer hunting in Oklahoma, is it not? It is. It's it's management now of our deer population so that it doesn't be overpopulated. Without hunting, it could be overpopulated. It could also cause a lot more vehicle collisions, uh, yeah. car vehicle collisions. You know, they go up every year with the the chance of you as an individual driver. I think it's one in 103 vehicles now in Oklahoma are going to have and throughout the year going to have a animal vehicle collision. And a year ago, it was like one in 113. So, um, you know, that's just what happens when you're not managing those big game animals, specifically deer, is they can cause a lot of problems. Um, they can overpopulate, decimate their habitat. Um, it is great food. There's a lot of folks that originally didn't want to harvest deer, but now are going to the organic aspect. Um, want to provide for themselves um, and they like to know that it's organically raised there's nothing better deer meat deer quality mm -hmm. um, you know it's something visit with your physician about it and they're going to tell you it's it's really good quality and good for your health so you know our deer gun season is 16 days it opens up the weekend before thanksgiving and runs through the first weekend in december when's both season both seasons already started it runs october 1st through january 15th uh, we just finished up a, a weekend ago, our muzzleloader primitive firearm season, which is a nine-day season. And so our next gun, next season opens up, like I said, uh, right before the week before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's a time of get together with your family members and go hunting, head to the deer woods. Sounds fun. I tell you, I, every time I go trout fishing, we see deer every time because we, where I go on the lower Illinois, you drive through some you know, heavy, thick forest brush mm -hmm. to get there. There's an old, it's an old road, but they're always in there and they're, they don't, they don't take off and run, you know, uh, we always stop and enjoy the sights while we're on the way. Can you define for us, we got about a minute and a half, the difference between public land and land access uh, situations so that folks understand the, where they can hunt. Okay, on our website, we've got our wildlife management areas that are listed, and those are public hunting areas. Um, they have different seasons on each of the, some of those areas, so you always have to check the regulations, but those are designated as our public areas. All other areas are either federal or privately owned, and so you have to have access to them. Federal areas are really limited as far as their access. Some of them do offer hunting opportunities. We do also have now what we call an OLAP program, a land access program, where we're leasing private lands and opening them up to individuals to hunt uh, through, so that you don't have to lease them yourselves. The agency is, and you don't have to pay any extra. You just have to follow the rules again and click on it and see what is allowed on those land access permit areas that we've got. Um, so there's around 100,000 acres there now. I got about one minute and I need to know can you, off the top of your head, give me the record weight of trout? And what's the record right now for the largest buck shot in Oklahoma? Oh, typical deer is 100 and, around 194 inches. I forget what the non-typical. It's in the 250s, 260s, I think. And you're really, man, I wish I'd had it on that page. I could have pulled it up right away as far as the trout. Let me see. Here's the trout. I got the regulations right here. 10 seconds. Uh, trout. Rainbow is 11 pounds, 4.32 ounces. And brown trout, 17 pounds, oh, 4.6 ounces. That's a torpedo. Colin, we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming. And we do appreciate it, folks. Get out there and enjoy the land in Oklahoma. We're out of time. See you next time.